Satan loves to do that. He loves to get in our ear and just tell us that we're just not good enough. He would love you to believe that you're not good enough, that the mistakes that you've made in your past exempts you from God's blessing, and that God simply doesn't care about you. But I'm here to tell you the truth. It doesn't matter what you have done. It doesn't matter who you have hurt. It doesn't matter how bad that you have been. Nothing can stop you from having your moment with Jesus. And if you have failed God in the past, you're in pretty good company. <coughs> Moses was a murderer, yet he had his moment at the burning bush. David was an adulterer, yet he was called a man after God's own heart. Noah got drunk and shamed his family. Abraham lied and gave his wife, Sarah, away twice because of his lack of faith. Yet God called him the father of his people. Peter denied Christ three times, yet God used him to heal the sick and raise the dead. The same Peter that said, I don't want nothing, I don't know that man, <laughs> when Jesus needed him the most. I don't know who he is. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know him. Mm. He repented and God used him so mightily. The Bible says that he was so anointed by God that even when, when people were sick, that if his shadow, even his shadow, would fall upon the sick, they would be healed. That's the same God that denied Christ three times. Mm. Abraham, uh, Paul murdered Christians. Yet he wrote nearly half of the New Testament. How did these great men turn it around? I want to tell you, they realized that they couldn't change their past. But what they said, what they realized real quick was they could change their future and the future of the people around them. And you may not be able to change what you have already done. But here's what I want you to know. You can change where you're going. I love to play golf. And there's things that I, you know, and every once in a while, if I hit a bad shot, I might take what we call a mulligan. That means simply that I'm just going to hit another one. I didn't like that one, so I'm just going to hit another one. And, of course, in the real game of golf, you can't do that, but we've been known to do that before. Don't you wish you could take a mulligan with your life? Amen. Don't you wish there are times in your life that you just wish you could take that back? What you said to somebody, what you did. Don't you wish you could just take it? I'm just going to take a mulligan on that guy. That never happened. Just wipe that out of the history books. It don't really work like that, does it? I mean, there's things that we have done in our past that I'm, it, it bothers us. There's things that I've done in my past that bothers me. And here's the deal. I told you I used to be a grocery store manager. So here's the you know. I can look at things that I had done in my past and I can say, oh God, I could never preach your word. Oh God, I could never pastor a church. I could never do that. Look at what I've done. But sometime in every single one of our lives, we have to decide, you want to know something? Yes, I did that. And I'm sorry. And I'll repent. And I've asked forgiveness. I've asked forgiveness from God. And I've asked forgiveness from others. And here's the deal. Am I going to let that stop me or am I going to go on? Every one of those great men of the Bible that I mentioned just a second ago, they probably dealt with that. Don't you think Paul dealt with that as he held the coats of the ones that stoned Stephen in, in Acts? Don't you think that he probably felt like, God, I'm not good enough. I held their coats while they stoned a man of God. If he would have let that stop him, I mean, you know, would he ever wrote half of the New Testament? He never would have done it. And that's what I want you to know, guys, today, is that there is forgiveness in Jesus. And we, all we've got, to, and you don't have to miss your moment with Jesus as he passes by because of what you've done in the past. He is here today, and he loves you. And all you've got to do is you just got to repent and say, God, you know, there's things that I've done. I'm sorry. And right now, Lord, I ask you to forgive me. And right there... We have the opportunity to change our life forever. We can have that moment with Jesus. Oh, don't ever think you're not good enough. Don't ever think that things that you've done in the past exempt you.
having a moment with Jesus, if, if not three. We can have a moment with Jesus. We may not can change our past, but we can sure change where we're going. And you know something else? We can change and take some people with us along the way. How many people were saved under Peter? How many people were saved under Paul? How many people's lives were changed because they said, yeah, I've done this. Yeah, I denied you, Jesus. I denied you when you need me the most. I let you down. But then it was the same guy that preached on the day of Pentecost, and 3,000 people were added to the kingdom. Why? He didn't let what he did stop him. He just repented, and he went on. And I don't know what you guys have got today that you need from the Lord, but I want to tell you I believe this. I feel his spirit in this place. I believe that Jesus is just passing by today. And what we need to do is we need to be like the blind beggar. We don't need to let people intimidate us. If people say, oh, don't, you're going to make a, a you're gonna, look at what you're doing. You're, you're just causing a distraction. Man, you listen to that, you're just going to just sink down. And you're never going to be able to, to be what God wants you to be. What is it that you've held back from God? What is it that scares you so much that you've held it back and you've never given it to Him? Are you scared of what God's going to call you to do? It doesn't mean He's going to call you to preach like you did me, but it may cause you to go to somebody and ask for forgiveness or something like that. But let me tell you, if you will do what God asks you to do, you're going to be set free. You're going to be happy. You're going to get over what has held you back, and you're going to be able to move on, just like those great men in the Bible did. None of us are perfect. But we've got a God that is. And if you need a physical healing from God today, if your spouse needs a touch from God, if you've got somebody in your family that needs that, you can stand in for them today. Jesus is here, and he's passing by. And all we got to do is just begin to reach out for him and to grab his attention, and he can heal us. Do you need an emotion? Are you... Are you emotionally messed up is there something in your remote in your spirit that you need is there a spiritual thing that you need today whatever it is i'm here to tell you god is here to touch you he has a plan for you and that plan is for you to succeed and not to fail a plan to give you a hope and a future all you got to do is just reach out and say jesus son of david have mercy on me. You can't fix it. Only He can. So we got to come to His mercy. We got to ask, you know, we got to get humble and realize we can't fix it ourselves and say, Jesus, you're the only one that can. You're the Son of David. You're the Son of God. I believe in who you really are. Have mercy on me today. I need you. And if we'll do that, oh, uh, every. Marriages can be healed. Children can, can be brought back. Healings can take place. All we got to do is reach out. Would you bow your heads all over this room today?